Are you anxious about asking for those letters of recommendation? Stick around on how to best prep for the process and to learn about the key moments that you need to kind of be aware of. For the best personal statement coaching, make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell so you don't lose out on any videos I post every Tuesday. There are four steps that you wanna take into account when um, submitting and asking for your letters of recommendation. Hi, I am Dr. Josie with Write Your Acceptance as a university faculty member who writes letters every year for students. And as a personal statement coach, um, I know how to help you maximize your candidacy and letters of recommendation are essential to that kind of whole package. So stick around. Step one, find out who should be writing your letters of recommendation, right? So ideally you are kind of generating a list, a thoughtful list, and you wanna have a couple of science professors, a non-science professor, a researcher perhaps, or and a community leader that you volunteered under, that you've cultivated a relationship with. So bonus, and this is not to worry anyone that doesn't have this, but if you have a relationship with a professor or a professional in the university that you are applying to, that would be a great letter to have. That's definitely an advantage. Um, but you wanna make sure it's someone that actually knows you, right? You don't want a generic letter from someone that can kind of just stamp the university name on your recommendation letter. That's not really gonna help. Also, some students um, and kind of pre-health advisors I've, I've spoken to have mentioned, if you know someone like a famous researcher um, that, um, that is kind of relevant and timely today, um, that may be of interest. But again, I always, always come back to simplicity and authenticity for my students. So you wanna make sure that these are um, individuals and professionals, professors who truly know you and can advocate towards who you are and, and sh just kind of show you in the best, most detailed light. Step two, contact them early. So um, it doesn't matter if it's a doctor that you shadowed, a professor, a community organizer, a leader that you cultivated a relationship with, you want to make sure that you are giving them a lot, like ample time. So basically, you know, I'm a little extra, so I would say at least four weeks in anticipation. I will tell you, I they all kind of tend to add up all at the round the same time. And it's the worst when a student kind of, you know, emails and says, oh, miss, but can I have it in five days? And I'm like, Oof, tough, tough, because it's a disservice to you. So you want to give the your recommenders, your letter writers, um, ample time to really kind of think through what they're going to say, kind of add in details, key moments that they remember and takeaways of your time together. So the more time that you give them, the better it is for the kind of strength of the letter. Also, you don't have to give them, you know, four or five weeks and then you're just kind of like you email them or you go in person to office hours and then you're like biting your nails waiting to hear. You can kind of nudge them, give them a friendly reminder and, um, you know, two weeks in or two weeks before, um, ideally you're, you're kind of receiving the letters. Another pointer is to kind of ask for more letters than you need. Kind of the stock requirement is um, three letters uh, for schools, but first, Disclaimer, you wanna make sure that um, you go into each of uh, school's guidelines and make sure how many letters and what kinds of letters they need. But kind of usually it's three letters. Um, but I would ask for at least five letters. You wanna make sure, you know, sometimes a professor won't come through, won't come through in time. Um, but you can also pick and choose which letters go to which school. So then you wanna make sure if it's a very kind of research-driven um, institution or there's a research um, kind of you know, project that you're very interested in, maybe a letter goes into that one that, um, you know, and then a humanities uh, letter goes into another school. So you can kind of pick and choose and strategize what kind of your packet looks like. So if you have more letters, you have more options. Okay, so from a professor's point of view, let me tell you kind of what I go through. So when a student asks me and I say yes, yes, sometimes I say no, and I'll tell you why, but give me a second, give me a second. So. Um, I usually kind of go back to all the work that they did in my class, not only the grades, but I'll go back to the essays, I'll go back to my comments, and really kind of refresh on the type of rapport we had, but also the type of student um, they were in the class. And, um, and that's kind of always helpful because I like to put in very specific details on um, kind of memorable experiences in the classroom. So that takes time. 
one. And two, from a student perspective, I love when students not only send me their resume, most students will be like, um, you know, send me a, an attached resume and that's great. But I am reading this document, their resume cold. So um, I rather that students kind of on top of giving me their resume, write in the email or give me in person um, two or three kind of memorable mom moments, memorable moments from our class together. And that kind of refreshes my memory, but also tells me what they took away from our class. And, and I can bring in some of that content as well um, into the letter. And so that's great color and great detail. And, um, and it's the student kind of helping advance the, the essay. So yes, sometimes I say no. Um, and you know, like many of the kind of moments and crossroads that you find yourself in on the pre-med journey, um, I would say don't take it personally if you do get a no. Sometimes, um, first I know that a lukewarm or generic, um, not even negative, negative obviously kind of is terrible, but a lukewarm, unenthusiastic letter is going to do more harm than good for the for the student. So if I say no, it's really because I just don't feel that um, I have the content to be as compelling as possible to recommend the student. I don't know them enough. I didn't like have, you know, outside the classroom experiences, rapport during office hours or something that I just don't have enough to kind of wrap my um, kind of um, content around that that makes it a compelling letter so um yes it would be extra work to to ask for someone else but sometimes that's the better fit also i always ask um you know the timeline because if i have three five days and sometimes i do i will say no if i just don't have the time because if i don't have the time to dedicate to a robust kind of thoughtfully crafted letter, then I am doing a disservice to the student and I would rather say no than, um, than kind of do that kind of harm, potential harm to an application. Um, and so that's why another reason to ask more, more professors or more kind of, you know, um, individuals, letter writers, than, um, than what you need so that you can kind of then play around with the number two. So step three is know the process. Um, Yes, you can, since your application can be verified without the letters of recommendation, most letters of recommendation are really kind of taken into account um, with the secondaries and kind of the, in the second round, right? So um, yes, you can turn your application in before the letters are in. And since most schools um, are rolling admission, time is of the essence and the earlier you apply, the better. Um, you want to make sure that that's not an excuse to slack. You want to give people time. You want to give them ample time. You want to get on it yesterday right if you need them and time is of the essence also you want to make sure that you kind of figure out what processes are available and services are available in your schools um, there are you can kind of upload up to 10 letters but really it's 10 letter types so there are individual letters there are committee letters um, and so if you have a pre-health office um, in your school, sometimes the process is that they will kind of interview you and compile a packet for you, right? And so then all the letters that you um, bring together, they'll kind of bring, um, they'll put together and then turn that into to MCAS for you. Um, so like as a, as a whole. Um, and so that can take a little longer than if you are individually uploading your essays. Um, but you want to make sure that um, that is as streamlined as possible and um, and really it kind of um, advocates for you in a cohesive like strong kind of voice unified voice um, as a school so that I think is also great are you nervous about asking for recommendation letters or did you already ask for them and you have a um, terrible experience you want to share comment below we'd love to kind of give you some support step four is the osteo reapplicant writing your own letter oh my type thing so this is like a catch-all step so if you are applying to md and do schools you want to make sure that you kind of um, enlist a third-party service like interfolio um, to kind of help you organize your list and then distribute um, your letters and so um, the great thing about interfolio is that they hold the letters for more than a year um, however if you are a reapplicant my suggestion is that you ask for your letters again and you kind of connect with those letter writers, give them an update of what you've been doing for the last year, give them again memorable experiences, whether um, with that professor or with that letter writer, and then during the year that you've been kind of um, 
in the application season the year before so you want to make sure that you are giving them personalized feedback so that they can just kind of make that letter stronger for you and then yes sometimes it will happen that professors or letter writers will say oh just write it for me and then i will kind of tweak it approve it and then kind of send it off and if that is the case um, that does happen you want to make sure that you have um, very detailed but very kind of you know I met so and so so um, you're writing about yourself in the third person if you want more guidance on the letters or if you want um, more guidance and expert strategies for your personal statement definitely book a one-on-one -on -one call with me it's in the description below the link and if you like this video, if you found it helpful, please give us a like, please comment below helpful, and uh, more will come with at you soon. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you. Bye.